The name of this tutorial is Blender 2.62 Bezier Circle Tutorial. This tutorial is the first in a series on modeling with curves in Blender. Mesh modeling is based on polygons, straight lines connected together to form a face. Most objects occurring in nature, look at the palm of your hand, your face in a mirror, a leaf, or a drop of water, are curvy. Curves indicate naturalness and beauty, such as in a car, a house, or a flower. For example, if we say that a car is boxy, that's a criticism of its straight line polygonal design. To make a car conform to our idea of beauty, the design needs to have some curves. Modeling an object with curves will give it more natural, organic look. Part of the problem with mesh modeling is that no matter how much geometry you define, say for a human face, you're never going to get the exact natural shape of the object. Thus, the need for modeling with curves. Blender supports curve-based modeling in a variety of ways. In this tutorial, I'll explain the basics of the simplest Blender curve object, the Bezier Circle, as well as to show how mesh modeling and curve modeling differ. Actually, the Bezier Circle is just a specialized type of Bezier curve, a two-dimensional Bezier curve with a circle surface. We'll examine Bezier curves as well as other curve objects in future tutorials. Bezier curves are objects defined by mathematical formulas. The formulas define an exact shape. This does not happen with a mesh, where the polygons define the shape. A circle mesh is not really a circle, but a regular polygon. To give you a visual example, I'll start with the default blender scene, delete the default cube, and go into top view, numpad 7, and orthographic view, numpad 5. I'll add a mesh circle, shift A, mesh, circle. I'll press F12 to render. Currently, the circle does not render. I'll press Escape to return to 3D view. In Blender, an object does not render unless it has a face. To illustrate this, I'll go to the Operator Tools panel for Add Circle and click the Fill button. Fill creates faces in the circle mesh. If you press F12 to render, the circular shape renders. I'll press Escape to return to the 3D view. Look at the Add Circle panel again. Note that there's an entry for vertices, and the number of vertices is 32. Change the number of vertices to 4, and press F12 to render. What rendered was actually a square instead of a circle. If you change the number of vertices to 5 and render, you'll get a pentagon. Change of the, the number of vertices to 6 results in a hexagon, and so on. So Blender is lying. The default mesh circle is not a circle at all, but a 32 agon. I don't know the Greek word for 32, so I made this up. But what was actually rendered? To see this, tab into edit mode. If you look at the information window, you should see that there are 33 vertices, 64 edges, and 32 faces. The 33 vertices consist of the center vertex and 32 vertices around it, each 360 divided by 32 degrees, or 11.25 degrees from each other. Go to Face Select mode, uh, Control Tab and Faces, and deselect the faces. What I actually rendered were 32 triangular faces from the origin point with 32 edges each of one blender unit originating from the center. This is nowhere near how circles are described in high school geometry textbooks. However, it's exactly how computer renderers work. Renderers have to reduce the object to triangles, a process known as tessellation. So this rendering time is extremely fast because the tessellation has already been done and the renderer just has to render each triangle. Modeling based on this mesh circle creates problems. I'll delete the mesh circle and add a mesh cylinder. Shift A, mesh cylinder. Guess what? A mesh cylinder isn't a cylinder either. A mesh cylinder is just a 32 vertex 32 agon extruded upward two blender units in the Z direction if cap ends are unchecked. If cap ends is checked, a vertex is added at both top and bottom and triangular faces are created to create each end to fake a circle. This adds more faces to the original mesh, which slows render time somewhat. Press F12 to render. To make this cylinder look like, say, a Quaker Oats oatmeal box, you need to smooth out the edges with smooth and or subdivision surfacing. Perhaps make sure that the edges in the top at the bottom are well defined. You might use a bevel modifier and so on. All of this adds time to your render. Basically, you have to fake out smoothness by either adding geometry, 
adding modifiers which add to the render time, or both. Basically, you fake it until you make it. I hope I've convinced you that you can never get an exact circle shape from mesh modeling. However, with the Bezier circle, you can. Here's how. I'll delete the cylinder and add a curve circle. Shift A, curve, circle. Again, it looks like a circle was created. This time, if you look at the options for Bezier circle in the tool shelf, you won't see vertices or radius. Blender doesn't need it. By default, the circle is drawn with the center on the 3D cursor and a radius of one blender unit. If you press F12 to render, just like before, the circle doesn't render. That's because, by default, the circle is a 3D Bezier curve. To render, a Bezier curve needs to have a surface, kind of analogous to a mesh needing a face. To add a surface to the circle, go to the Object Data section, which shows the curve is 3D, and click 2D instead. Now a surface displays. Pressing F12 does render the circle. But how's the rendering done? I'll turn off the 3D manipulator, which is not necessary for this discussion, and tab into edit mode. Perhaps you thought you might see a lot of vertices, like in the mesh circle. Instead, you see a perfect circle with four yellow lines, each with three dots arranged 90 degrees around the circle. The rendering is done mathematically. The yellow lines act like sort of vertices in a mesh and control the shape of the object. Note that there are only four of them. Just as with a mesh, I can select the middle of the three dots, also called a control point, by right-clicking on it. I'll select the bottom control point, which turns the other two control points in the line white. I'll press the G key and move the point down. The shape is redrawn perfectly. I'll render the new shape. What's happening is that the renderer first renders the four reference points and then interpolates, figures out the curve shape between each of them mathematically to create the curve shape. The render doesn't depend on vertices, but instead on a mathematical equation on how to draw each part of the curve. The exact shape of the curve can be controlled by the two lines on each end of the reference point. These lines are called control handles. I'll select the bottom left control handle by right clicking on its dot. I'll press the G key to move the dot. Doing that changes the shape of the curve so it bends inward or outward coming into the control point. I'll select the bottom right control handle by right clicking on its dot. I'll press the G key and move that dot. Note the shape change at the bottom right of the curve. The curve shape is still smooth and accurate. I'll render the shape. We can control the shape quite well just with four control points. We can shift select multiple control points and grab them to move more than one at a time. We can also scale multiple control points. I'll select multiple control points and press the S key and scale them outward. However, we may want additional control points for finer, more detailed shape control. Select the control point, then shift select an adjacent control point, and click the subdivide button, which creates a control point halfway between the two. If you want additional subdivisions, change the number of cuts in the tool shelf to whatever you want. This is a little bit like loop cuts. You can also control the shape, say, to get the exact straight lines using the handle control buttons. One neat feature is to model straight lines instead of curves on all or parts of your model. This is great if you're tracing an outline. To illustrate, select all the control points by pressing the A key twice. Then click on Vector in the Handle section of the tool shelf. Now the shape is composed of all line segments. It still renders accurately. There are other ways to control shape handles. Select a control point. Click a line. Click its left control handle and move it. Note that the right control handle, controlling movement on the other side, also moves in tandem with the left control handle, aligning with the movement of the other handle. I'll select a control point and select free. I'll move the left control handle. The right control handle is unaffected. A typical use of curve modeling is to follow the outline of a logo or other image with a curve and then convert it to a mesh so you can do more detailed modeling. After you have the outline finish, you can create a mesh object by pressing Alt-C and selecting Convert to Mesh. You have all the power of mesh modeling available to you. As you can see, curve modeling adds a lot of power and control to your tool set. We'll explore more of this power in subsequent tutorials, so stay tuned and happy blendering.